Well, good morning and welcome here at Worship at the Church by the Sea this morning. We're delighted that you are with us. Last Sunday, we gave out bread dough to anyone who wished to make bread for communion this Sunday. Hey, Barb, how are you? Hi, Rob, how you doing? Good, do you have that bread for communion? Well, you know, I, I thought about that and unfortunately it's still frozen. <laughs> I had a really busy week and I didn't get a chance to make the dough. <laughs> yes, so we'll use an alternative for worship today. <laughs> well, if you're like Barb and you haven't had a chance to bake that bread dough that you received, no problem. Or if you weren't at worship last week and still would like to bake some bread for yourself or maybe a neighbor. <laughs> I think I will. Thaw it first. We do have extra bread dough available just like this frozen here in the office. So just give a call to arrange a time to pick up a bag. In any case, this is a good time for all of you to get some bread freshly baked or otherwise and some juice and we will be serving communion a little later in the service. Meanwhile, let us prepare our hearts and minds. Take a deep breath and release and open up to the spirit of the holy as we listen to our prelude by Robert and Danny. <laughs> Well, thank you, Robert and Dan. Indeed, beautiful. Join us this Wednesday, August 11th at 6.30 p.m. for our second Cooking from the Bible series on Zoom. 
This week's lesson will be on how to make tabbouleh. Yummy. For more, I know. I'm yummy, excited. yummy. For more information, please contact the church office or email Gina Bartroff using the information that you see on your screen. Well, as we are all aware, school is just around the corner. And it has been a tradition of our mission committee that we have assisted those in need with school supplies. We also have a community, as a community have done that as well. If you would like to make a financial contribution to help us as we help others, wonderful. Just contact the church office. But if you need supplies, please also contact the church office so we can get an idea of those who are in need. And also we know that the Delta variant of COVID is out there. And so if you have not yet received a vaccine and would like to and need some help doing that, please give a call to the church. We would be happy to arrange an appointment or a ride so that you can be vaccinated. And right now, as I understand in Bay Harbor Islands, there is both testing and vaccinations available and there is no line and no waiting. Let us now be in the spirit of prayer as we pray together the invocation. Holy God, you call us to listen, and yet so often we find that surprisingly difficult. So help us, O oh God, to lay down our worries and all that distracts us from a holy silence within which we can be filled with your spirit and hear your whisper. And then let us emerge out of that silence willing to speak for those without voice, for those in whom hope has gone silent. Let us speak to inspire the work of compassion and justice. Then, O oh God, allow us to be patient in that work, knowing you are still creating, still inspiring and building blessings, so that one day it will be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Let us now listen as our choir sings our opening song, I've Got a River of Life.
Our first scripture reading for this morning comes from several chapters of the book of Genesis. It is the story of Abraham and Sarah and the birth of Ishmael. Let us open our minds, our hearts, our very spirits to the word and to the inspiration of God. Now the Lord came and said to Abraham, Go from your country, from your kindred, and from your father's house to the land that I will show you, for I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. And so Abraham and Sarah went. But ten years later, still Sarah and Abraham, they had no children. Now, Sarah had an Egyptian slave whose name was Hagar. And Sarah gave her to her husband Abraham in order to bear children. And Hagar indeed did conceive, and a son was born and named Ishmael. Afterward, Sarah gave birth to Isaac as God had predicted. And she said to Abraham, Cast out Hagar with her son, for this son of hers shall not inherit over our son Isaac. So Abraham took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar. And putting it on her shoulder, he sent the child Ishmael and her away to wander in the desert wilderness. When the water was all gone, Hagar wept, saying, O God, do not let me look upon the death of my child. And then an angel of God called out to Hagar, Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy throughout the years, and Ishmael bore twelve children, the names of the fifth and the sixth and the seventh of his children were Mishma, Duma, and Masa. Our second scripture reading for this morning is a very short one. It comes from Paul's letter to the Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Paul writes, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, our minds, our very spirits, may they be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer, Amen. Well, patience. Patience is a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. And because that work of patience is so often invisible, that work is often frustrating and misunderstood. For example, if someone is being patient, it can appear that they are doing nothing at all. But patience is not nothing. And if mastered and properly applied, patience can be everything out of it. Miraculous and holy things can grow. Patience, for example, is what turns flour and water and yeast eventually into delicious, nutritious bread. Once you unfreeze it, of course. Patience exercised is what turns a seed into the sweet nectar of fruit. Patience is what keeps us from eating cold, raw cookie dough so we can experience the joy of warm cookies with melted chocolate chips. Notice, in all of these examples, patience is not the same as an absence of action. To get from cookie dough or a seed or dry flour to cookies or cucumbers or croissants, action is 
needed. A baker must knead the dough, add salt and water. A farmer must irrigate the seed. Patience is not the absence of action. Patience is the absence of judgment. The judgment that because something has not yet happened, it will never happen. Patience comes from the belief that despite the fact that the dough is not yet bread or the seed is not yet a fruit, it can and will be with God's help, with our work and in time. Patience is faith. The faith to act without yet seeing the results of our work. It's the protective womb in which faith becomes the substance of things not yet seen. But patience is something that Sarah and Abraham do not have. God appears to them and says, Leave your home and travel to a place that I will show you, and I will make of you a mighty nation, and your offspring will be more numerous than the stars in the sky. And yet, of course, as we heard ten years later, Sarah and Abraham still have no children. Abraham, at this point, is now 85 years old. Patience for God's promise for them, had grown thin. And of course, that happens in our lives too. Sometimes God's promises or our hopes, when they are delayed, it wears holes in our faith. Promises and hope for justice, for an end to suffering or to illness, for peace, when they languish, when they go unfulfilled, we become impatient. We lose our faith and we take matters into our own hands. Just like Abraham and Sarah, we start to force outcomes. But beware, the fruit of forced outcomes is almost inevitably, as we saw with Sarah, and with Abraham, injustice and pain and ultimately regret. That, of course, is what happened to Sarah and Abraham in their impatience to have a child, to know God's promises. Abraham, with Sarah's approval, forces himself on Hagar, a slave, and Hagar bears the son Ishmael. Several years later, just as God had promised, Sarah now conceives Isaac, and Isaac is born. As firstborn, Ishmael is the true heir of everything that comes from Abraham. But Sarah and Abraham wish Isaac to have the rights of the firstborn son. Already the fruits of Abraham and Sarah's impatience have resulted in an injustice against Hagar, but now those fruits include regret, regret for what Sarah and Abraham have done. Yet tragically, as too often happens in our world, Sarah and Abraham attempt to remedy their first impatient injustice by committing another. This time, they callously banish Hagar and Ishmael, sending them out into the desert to die. But they do not die. God, of course, intervenes, miraculously providing a well in the desert to save them. Their lives after that, Hagar and Ishmael, that's a whole other story for another time, but for today, it is enough for us to remember the story of Abraham and Sarah, to remember that when we, like they, make decisions or act out of the anger or the frustration of impatience, or when we use coercive force to rush the outcomes that we desire, it only causes suffering and pain 
for us and for many now and for a long time into the future. The sting of impatient, harsh words said in frustrated anger, unilateral decisions made because multilateral solutions just seem to take too long or to be too messy, take us away from God's promises, promises of peace and justice and right relationship. And yet, of course, we've all been there in the throes of impatience. At one time or another, we've all said and done hurtful things out of our impatience that we regret. So what are we to do? What is the path that leads toward healing and reconciliation after impatience? Well, perhaps Ishmael's children offer a clue. Ishmael, having borne the pain of another's impatience, names three of his children, Mishma, Duma, and Masa. Mishma means listen. Duma means silence. Masa means patience. Together, listen, silence, and patience. They offer advice that is corrective to our impatience. These names inspire James, the brother of Jesus, to write, Be quick to listen and slow to speak and even slower to anger. For anger does not produce God's righteousness. Mishma, Duma, and Masa. They're like a holy prayer, an edifying mantra. Listen much, speak little, and have patience in the promises of God. These are the pillars that uphold our faith, the pillars that allow us to believe that God is still working, although that work may be invisible and seem as nothing. These pillars can inspire us, as they did James, to continually and faithfully work for the promises of God with the patience of a baker who lovingly kneads the present situation like dough until it is ready to rise into something greater. These pillars can give us the strength to love when the loving is hard, to speak peace or compassion amid the clamoring din of hatred so prevalent, and to listen compassionately to another's pain so earnestly that it brings us pain too. For this is the faith, the primordial substance Paul writes about, out of which a better day not yet seen is created. This work of patience will be some of the hardest work we ever do, but this work will fill your heart with hope and in time, joy. By it, you will inherit God's promised blessings, more numerous than the stars in the sky. May it be so. Amen. Let us now listen to Bella Canava as she sings. Remember the best days of 
Thank you, Bella. You never cease to amaze me. You are fabulous. If you don't know Bella Canava, she's been a member of our church since she was very small, and she continues to bless us. If you have a prayer concern or a celebration that you'd like us to lift up, please contact the church office, and we will do everything we can to include it in the Sunday prayer. If you would like to pray with Rob and I, in private, let us know that as well. Let us now take a deep breath and breathe in the quiet as we pray. Holy One, you offer your guidance in the sound of sheer silence. Help us to hear your whisper, your leading to be willing to go where we are called, offering and receiving hope as we journey in faith. Often in the waiting, doubt creeps in and we wonder when, how long, are you really there, God? We become fearful and frustrated or witness suffering and question, will what we so desperately hope for come. In the waiting and doubt, help me to be still, to fear not, to feel your embrace and remember that the light of Christ is with us even in the darkness. Continue to remind us that hope is found in unexpected ways through unexpected voices, slowly, subtly, Yet it comes. And when our patience is tested, when we are weary, when hope wanes, when loss and grief, anxiety and angst grip our spirits, grant us patience with our own emotions and with others. Help us to accept those around us and let the light of Christ fill us so that that hope may spill out into the world. Today, in our own community, we pray. We pray for Belkis' son who has COVID and all others who are ill, for Marion and her parents, for Rob and his parents, for Tara and her parents, for Kurt and Helga, for Amy, Kim, Stephanie, Gigi, Patty, Joan Mary, Bill, and all recovering from cancer. May God's light surround you and bring you peace. And for Ray on the loss of his parents, Amelia and Vincente Perez, may God's perpetual light shine upon them and grant them eternal rest. And in the silence, let us take a moment and reflect and ask God for patience, understanding, compassion, and kindness. Let us remember that God is with us and with all whom we love. And as we take this moment in the quiet, I invite you to read this poem.
Thank you. Well, if you have that piece of bread or that juice, we are entering into a time of communion. Jesus says that all of us are welcome at the table. All of us who are longing to know the presence of God in our lives and world, longing to be in communion with Christ. Gracious God, ignite our hearts and place your spirit within us as we eat and drink at your table. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, even in the desert, your spirit flows, bringing life. Even when we cannot see it, you offer us your presence. Even when we were still far off from your loving ways, you love us and sent to us teachers and prophets like Elijah, like Moses, who taught us and lead us back into your ways of love. We thank you for them and for all that sustains life, for all people of faith in every generation who have made your love tangible in this world. We thank you especially for Jesus the Christ, whom you sent from your very own spirit and has shown us the way to new and eternal life. Holy God, you are the one that makes all things new. As we eat and drink at your table, may your spirit find a home in us. And through our lives, may it find a home in this world. Amen. Amen. Well, we recall anew these words, these acts of Jesus, that on the very night that he was betrayed, he shared a meal with his friends, with the disciples. And at that meal, Jesus took a loaf of bread. He gave thanks for it, and he blessed it. And then he broke it, and he offered it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And in the same way, gathered with his friends on that Passover night, he took the cup, he gave thanks and blessed it, and said, Take and drink, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, remember me. Let us pray. Gracious God, spend, send your spirit upon this bread and juice that they may be for us like your own spirit and presence. May we be filled with your grace and renewed in body, mind, and spirit. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ. And the cup of salvation. Let us now... Listen as our choir sings the closing hymn, Amazing Grace.
love Amazing Grace. Thank you so much. Well, if you're new to our community, Rob and I want to welcome you here. Please contact the church office so we might better get to know you. And of course, there are programs that are happening all week long. Just tune in, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or on our website. If you need any information about any of those, just call us. Let us now pray. As you go about your week, when the news or the traffic begin to challenge your composure. Breathe deeply and remember, the harvest comes, but only with time and effort and patience. So as you go, hold tightly to the knowledge that God is with you. God will guide you. God will continue to offer grace. So go now to love and serve God. Amen. Amen. Let us now listen to our postlude. And have a beautiful and blessed week. Thank you.